the commission was basically that Sheffield's in this process of great change. The traditional industries um, are gradually reducing. Comment, see what you think, what interests you, you find what you want to look at. So I started to explore that whole idea of the Don Valley, that I could produce an image that would have Tinsley Viaduct to the cooling towers, but would have the river in the foreground or and, and all these kind of disparate elements that kind of pointed to both the man-made and the natural. I can remember somebody said to me years ago, um, Ooh, you're nothing like your work, are you? I expect you to be really serious and miserable. And I said, well, don't, that's just one facet of who I am. You know, that, that humour's always there. And I think in a way, it started to come through more in the later work. So the, the dog poo bags, looking okay, these. <laughs> it's a serious, you know, it's a deadly serious project. Um, in, you know, and the whole idea of what we do with the environment and litter and crap in every sense of the word and plastics. And then of course it dawned on me, I thought, well, I'm doing exactly what Gary Winogram talked about all those years ago, you know, I take photographs to see what things look like photographed. You know, and I think that's what I've been doing pretty much my entire life. You know, and now I'm photographing compost and I'm photographing this, that and the other. But it's all to see what things look like. I suppose what I'm getting to is that all that old maxim about old photographs reveal far more about the person behind the camera than the subject in front of it. And I think that's very much a case when I look at my work, I see all my work. Because I'm invested, it's, you know, it's my investment in me and me consciously or unconsciously reflecting on something I want to talk about, something that's important to me, whether it's social, political, environmental, or usually all of that in a mash somewhere. So when I look at my pictures from Sheffield or any other phase of my practice they all evoke some sense of where i was at the time over the years i seem to have had two or three different facets which are all different facets to how i take photographs and i think maybe like a painter picking up a different brush changes the way they do things if i picked up a different camera it would change the way i took pictures each camera becomes a different tool in that process, whether I'm using a 5, 4, 6, 9 rangefinder or a um, 6, 7 through the lens beast. And I'm finding I'm missing in a way that it's because now that we're using digital, I'm, not, I'm a bit lost. I'm kind of like not sure what to do because I can't afford to shoot film and I don't have a decent digital camera at the moment. It's going darker, isn't it? But that I'm having to rethink again what it means for me and what tool is the right piece of kit to allow me to talk about what I want to do. It's funny because you never know what's going to work until you kind of see it in the really. <coughs> well, that one just doesn't work at all. And the versatility of it, you can just... And if it doesn't work out, then you then you do another one. <laughs> ah, that's that's a cliff road. And again, those two in Tommy's. There's Tommy in the mirror. So Tommy's was a barber 
on just on the off on Articliff Road, and he, he was under CPO compulsory purchase. So I'm, I've visited Tommy's on a few occasions, and this is this two pictures of him. I only photographed him. The young ones I used of him in the mirror, but um, yeah, it was kind of interesting. These are three retired steel workers. They were just in there, just as, as I walked in, they were just putting the coat on. Can I take your picture? Yeah, sure you can. And Attercliffe Road. This is the buy and sell. I think that's it's the stadium or the arena. I can never remember which. So, um, so the Attercliffe Road's running here. And this is his Peter's buy and sell shop. So, so this was... Uh, this was a book I'd, that was done a few years back, which was a, a kind of um, John's greatest hits. It was my kind of retrospective. Matthew would say to me, have you ever thought of shooting anything in colour? No, I don't want to do colour. I don't, I'm not interested in colour, that new British colour documentary stuff. I went out one day, took some coloured films, and I went back to one of the locations that I photographed before in the Attercliffe Valley. There was this kind of like sweeps of metal and stuff that were all kind of like just bits of old weather factory had been pulled down. It was just these. And then with the Tinsley Viaduct behind it, so I was photographing almost through this metal to that. So I went back and redid it in colour. First colour picture I'd ever taken in my life. Um, I had to send it away for processing because I couldn't do colour myself. Um, and I got the contact sheets back and it was like, wow, wow, <laughs> what? Uh, and there was only any colour in it, it was pretty much monochrome. But what it did, it completely changed my whole way of thinking about what photography was. And what it did is it took images that had had almost a kind of sense of nostalgia about them i.e. black and white, <coughs> that it could have been almost, they would say, timeless. And said, this is happening now. And I haven't taken a black and white photograph since. So yeah, so this one's, as you can probably just, as I was talking, you can see it's far more about people. Been in my Arabian Nights cafe. And this is the... This is Peter's that was mentioned in that one. Sign of the times. That was a job creation scheme where basically they were into picking up litter. You know. Plastic tree. So yeah, and Daryl, you know, this was one of the old steelworks. I was photographing. I'll show you some of these. I'm sure he's a youngster. He's probably still around somewhere. You know, things. So yeah, it has a very different sensibility. One of the guys I met, who was one of the demolition crew in the steelworks, and he was, he, what he's telling me, he's pointing, he's saying they used to, used to every morning there used to be hundreds of men in the yard down there getting ready for work, and now it's now we're all pulling, now we're knocking it down. You know, so it's kind of um, that kind of sad, iconic moment. Joy's no spitting. <laughs>